Welcome back. There's a reason why we don't have too many blacksmiths anymore because the automobile was replaced by it was replaced uh, the horse and buggy. We still have malls, but many large brick and mortar retailers chains are struggling. Macy's alone closed 68 stores nationwide this year. So, like anything, the name of the game, as the saying goes, is to adapt or die. Joining us for more is personal shopper Don Raidmaker and Michael Snipes, an economics instructor at USF Sarasota Manatee. So, Don, let me start with you. Sure. What do you do? Uh, how long have you been doing that, and how does that basically, you know, help? get people into the stores and our local retailers to, to buy holiday gifts and all year round? Um, I'm a personal grocery shopper, so I primarily shop for groceries. So I'm pretty much an extension of that person. That I Primarily, I work for those who can't get out and about anymore, so the older generation, also convalescent people, and vacationers. And so, that's really a new way of, of doing things because mm -hmm. before, you know, these services were not around right. uh, and, and uh, basically you had to get to those stores. Right, right. Uh, Michael, in, in terms of what you're seeing in terms of economic trends, uh, there's, you know, our, our local malls and uh, retailers want that business to come in. We want to give them that business, but as I said at the outset, we are so busy in our lives these days and, and to fight traffic and to get to the mall to do our holiday shopping is becoming increasingly difficult. Sure, and, and online shopping, online retail isn't going anywhere, right? But at the same time, you, because online retailing and online shopping is so convenient, we have lost a little bit of kind of that visceral, physical connection with, with shopping. And so, I mean, I, I, even though r online shopping, online retail isn't going anywhere, I don't necessarily see that as really too much of a threat to the more traditional brick and mortar stores. Because, like the piece mentioned, you know, most transactions, most most shopping still takes place at a physical location. And so, one of the things I think would be interesting is it does provide certain opportunities for more traditional stores to get creative. If we can just maybe find a way to kind of hybridize the online experience and the convenience of the online experience with kind of the, the more, I guess, more emotional connection of buying things in person. Don, how do you combine the two? Because obviously what you provide is a great service to, to people who need it, but you also want to, you know, smell the tomato to make sure that it's fresh. Right. I mean, I personally like to go and feel it, touch it, see it. I want to see the quality. I want to see what I'm buying. So for me, I'm, I'm an in-store shopper. Um, I, and like I said, I'm just an extension for the people that I shop for. So they trust me. I built a trust relationship so they, you know, I know what they like, what they don't like, and I can bring it back and forth or... How has your relationship with the retailers, the, the, the stores, the, the, the grocery stores, uh, evolved over, over time? Uh, well, they know me. I mean, they know I'm shopping for other people, so they really cater to me a little bit. Um, if I need something, somebody runs in the back and gets it. Or um, if I, if they don't have the item, they'll they'll get me something else. So we really have developed a personal relationship. Michael, in that. this is one area in which there is a, a new industry where just a couple of years ago there was none. Mm -hmm. True and. To a certain extent, it's, it's a business model that's been around. You know, back in the 80s and the early 90s, you had the CD warehouses where you could buy CDs through the mail. And so it, it's been a business model that's been around for a while, but it is moving into areas that it previously hasn't, like with, with groceries and, and things like this. That's a, that's a market in an area that previously was really kind of ignored, by and large, by that particular, by that particular model. Okay, we are just getting warmed up. We'll have much more on retail sales right after we check the first alert weather, so stay with us. Welcome back. It's that time of year. The holiday shopping season is about to begin, and the challenge for local stores is to make it worthwhile for shoppers to come in instead of shopping online. Joining us for more is personal shopper Don Raidmaker and Michael Snipes, an economics instructor at USF Sarasota Manatee. Michael, you saw in Erica's story that uh, the local malls are, are saying, doing everything they can to get, get folks to come in, saying that it's the personal attention mm -hmm. that is really what is most important to, to shoppers. But still, uh, you see some of the numbers from the National Retail Federation that three point uh, sales are expected to increase by 3.4 percent but that's mostly going to online shopping. 
Well, I, I think that what that does is it does pre uh, present an opportunity for more traditional brick and mortar retailers. It does provide an opportunity for them. Because what we're seeing is we're seeing a generation come up and you know just graduating from college and just starting their careers and most of their life has been lived online. You know, they'll go to school online, they make their purchases online. And so the online experience is no longer novel. It's, it's, it's become how they conduct business. And so we're seeing this a little bit in education too, in that the students who are now coming up, that online novelty, that online convenience has almost become passe. And what they are now desiring is kind of that more personal experience. And so I think for more traditional brick and mortar retailers that presents an opportunity for them that if they can market and cater to that specific demographic that's an opportunity for them to increase sales. You know I once saw a lecture about the news business and the consolidation and the deregulation in the news business and I remember somebody saying to me that the news business will survive but the road from there to here is going to be a rough one. Just in the last year uh, you know we have a all these stores, these brick and mortar uh, retailers that have filed for Chapter 11, uh, which you know is just absolutely incredible. Uh, the Limited, Aerosols, uh, Perfuma, Toys R Us. Um, these are our retailers that we have just become so used to in our lives. Macy's, as I said at the outset, is closing so many stores. So, uh, is the idea that that retailers that need to market themselves to you know the recent college grads that, that we're talking about here? I, I certainly think that that is something that they could pursue. That if, if we say that you know if you come into our stores you'll get a person-to-person -person experience, you'll get a face-to-face -face experience, something that you can't get online. And, and when you know, you've, you've grown up online essentially you lose that face-to-face -face contact. And then that could be something that could be an opportunity say come in and you can actually experience uh, the, the product. You can talk to somebody who is an expert and you can ask them questions and get their opinions on things. And, and I think that that could possibly present a real opportunity for brick and mortar retailers. So Don, what, what is it that is an advantage to your customers? Because uh, you know they can buy a lot of these products directly from, from Walmart. And, and mm -hmm. in fact, there was a story in the news the other day that Walmart is not offering price discounts online because they want people to come into their stores. Right. Um, I can offer that to go and search out the best prices. Um, for my customers, because we have that personal relationship, I know what they buy on a weekly basis. I know what they need. You know, maybe they don't need it this week, they need it next week, but when I'm in the store, it's on sale this week. So we have that trust and I, I can buy it at that sale price this week knowing they're going to need it next week. Um, I'm like an extra brain for them. Um, if they forget to put something on their list, I say, oh, what about this? And they're like, oh, yeah, I needed that this week. Thanks for, for remembering. So for me, my business, I offer them a personal touch. Um, they know they're going to deal with me every week. I'm going to be the one to deliver. I'm going to be the one having the conversation. And they're like fam. I mean, we've become like family. Um, my kids have extra grandparents now. You know, <laughs> they've come to birthday parties. Uh, they ask how the grand grandbaby is. It's, yeah, it's very and personal. The is and when you buy stuff online, that you know, either you make a mistake in terms of your ordering and you're ordering mm -hmm. the wrong size or the wrong color or so forth. And yes, you could exchange those items, but I mean, it takes time. You have to go through a lot. And I would imagine that uh, what you're offering is really kind of a new way that also keeps the local retailers in business. Yes. Yes, and I, I, I love it. I, I mean, we want to keep our business in our community. We want to, we want to, you, you see new stores opening up all the time, all around. So people are wanting local right. items. Uh, Michael, let me ask you this. Uh, it has been a real challenge for uh, people who own malls, uh, the, the big companies that, that do so over the last couple of years, especially in our area. Uh, you know, we have a local mall in, in Sarasota that is, is uh, been closing stores a lot. On the other hand, you have the UTC uh, mall, which is an incredible place to even mm. just go and walk around. Is the name of the game to really kind of bump up the scale of, of uh, a mall if they want to st stay in business because uh, there's always a new one coming that's bigger and better? Uh, I, th I do think that's part of it. I mean, you, you got to stay ahead of the curve. You got you have to know who your customers are. You have to know the population that you're going to be serving. And so if, if you don't have the newest and the best and the brightest and the nicest, 
then you're probably going to get left behind. And so when you go to a mall like UTC, and, you know, it's, it's nice and, and clean and it's new and it's exciting. And you're, you're really trying to cater to your specific demographic. You're, 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 you're kind of marketing to the people who live in, in, in your population, in your, in your city. And if, and if you don't keep up with that, if you maybe have some areas around the mall that maybe become a little bit rougher, maybe aren't kept up as well, then that's certainly something that can feed into the mall. Right, and of course, Don, one of the biggest complaints that shoppers have is the traffic, the parking. Uh, it, it can be manning at some times. Do you see your business model growing in, into uh, a, a way for people to, to make those purchases here locally, mm -hmm. but they'll send you out to deal with oh, that yeah. and not them? Yeah, they don't have to deal with the traffic. They don't have to pay for the gas to go to the store. Um, they don't have to spend the time online. Yeah physically online not online online but in the line um, so yeah I definitely see what that is lost in terms of, of culturally if uh, w if people are not themselves going into those small stores that we saw in that uh, uh, story there and and you know that are part of our community down on Main Street it, it, what are the, well, one of the things that they mentioned in the piece that I thought was interesting is that and, it, and it's very true, when, when you shop local, the money stays locally. And so if, if you were to buy something from Amazon, I mean, if, you, if you're buying a used good, you not necessarily know where that money's going. If, if you buy directly from Amazon, that's not staying in Sarasota. Right, and, but we saw that with the advent of the malls. A lot of inner cities, uh, you know, downtowns, really basically closed up shop after the advent of the big mall. That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. And a lot of that was again just kind of reflecting changes in population. People were moving away from city centers, moving into the suburbs. That's where the malls are going to locate. Okay, we have to take a quick break and we'll be back for final thoughts in a moment. And our guests join us right now for final thoughts. And, and Donna, I'll start with you from your perspective. What do you think how your business model is going to expand that will get people the services and the things that they need here locally and keeping retailer brick and mortar in business uh, locally and how that's different from uh, what a lot of people are doing more and more in terms of just ordering their stuff online. Um, keeping business in locally, keeping it locally and um, having a personal touch, having somebody come and visit with you or or being that extra set of eyes, knowing your likes, dislikes. Maybe I see something else that I know you might like, and I can just call you up and say, I, you know, I see this for a really great deal. You know, you wanted this, but I also see this. And just adding to that shopping experience and knowing their dislikes. And and, and, and that's not something that people get just by shopping online. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. Michael, it seems to me that you can't uh, argue with the trends that we are seeing in terms of these major corporations that are going out of business. Um, I, I take your point in terms of being able to see a product yourself, touch it and feel it, try it on and, and so forth. But what is your concern about some of these legendary major retailers and their, their futures? Well, uh, from, a, from a strictly spending standpoint, from a strictly economic standpoint, it, it really, all it is, is really just kind of just changing up the times. It, it may be that uh, what's what's happening is is these retailers are experiencing a change in kind of consumer preferences. So consumers are maybe moving away from these more traditional brands because they see them as being older. Maybe that's where our, my parents shopped. We want to go someplace a little bit more I different. I remember Caldores as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of you had to say about last night's show and the continuing search for Sarasota teenager Jabaz Span. Span has been missing since Labor Day. There have been few leads. There are cries from the family asking for more help from the community. We went to Facebook to hear what some of you had to say, and Amy says, this has been breaking my heart for two months now, praying for Jabez. Thank you, Wayne Washington, for all your efforts to find him. Heather says, there are so many people that have no clue about this boy missing. It is unbelievable. SMH. Renee says, the possibilities aren't good. I'm just hoping he ran for his own safety and is well 
and unharmed, and so do we. If you'd like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. And eight, FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And also a reminder, you can get all the latest local and national news on your smartphone app. But if you are an Apple iOS user and have the old version of our app, you'll need to go to get rid of it by the end of the month. If you don't have the new app, you're going to miss all the news, video, and notifications that will keep you connected to our community. The app will update automatically for Android users. All smartphone users can find the new app by searching for My Suncoast in the App Store. We want to thank our guests for being here tonight, personal shopper Don Raidmaker and Michael Snipes, an economics instructor at USF Sarasota Manatee.